welcome back to Da TV. I am Elda, and if this is your first time tuning in, I welcome you with love, hugs, and kisses. Mwah. But in order for you to be my cousin, I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, then light up the comment section with hashtag Da Cousin Gang, and you'll officially be my cousin. Those of you that's been rocking with your girl, what's up, cousin? What's up, fummy? Show you do do more. You make my heart go beep 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 beep. But you know how we get down, we be like, welcome back, back, a hey, back, back, a hey. whoo. I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start. Um, but I do want to, I don't know if you want to call it a disclaimer. I don't know if you want to call it a message, um, but what I'm going to say this, and please hear my heart, I say this so humbly and I say this with love, okay? What I'm about to pour out, I'm not looking for sympathy. I am not looking for sympathy. Yes, it's unfortunate. Yes, it's crazy. Yes, it's going to be bizarre, but... I do not speak um, for sympathy because y'all know my channel is faith, family, and what? Motivation, encouragement, inspiration. So with that being said, I'm going to give my testimony, all right? And this testimony is still developing and I'm taking you guys along with me because as I go from faith to faith, as God increase me, as you know, as I grow, as I emerge, I want I want to be as transparent as possible so that y'all can see the process because you know sometimes we see people we don't see the process they went to they went through to glow up and the reason I said I'm not looking for sympathy because God allow us uh, to to go through uh, these things so that it can build what it needs to build in us and sometimes we have to be the first partakers and as being the first partakers when we share our testimony when we come across that person who is going through it or might go through it or um or is in the process themselves then we're able to guide them through we're able to give them some type we're like the we're like the the harriet tubman you understand what i'm saying so now what happens is what was intended to inspire what was intended to motivate what was intended to strengthen that person when you begin to look for sympathy now that process or that testimony loses its power because why you were looking for sympathy and i'm not looking for sympathy i just want to be transparent because i know that I'm not the only person that has gone through it and I know that I'm not the only person that will go through it okay so um so yeah um we gonna start from here so in July of last year we had a family reunion trip and when we came back from that trip I remember I was sitting home. It was a few days after. Um, I remember sitting home and I was sitting on the couch, same spot. And my daughter was in her room. And when she was in her room, she began to, my daughter likes to draw. So she brought me this picture and the picture was basically a woman with a child what appeared to be a child standing in front of the, the, I believe the parent. So I said, oh, I said, oh baby, this is cute. I said, um, I said, is that you in front of mommy? And she says, no, that's you with a baby in your belly. So I'm, I'm taking back like, okay. So I didn't say nothing. I just dated it and I, you know, I put a date on it. Um, and then I would say about 30 minutes later, she came back and she, um, she brought me another, <laughs> she brought me another picture. 
And this time, it was the same thing. Um, she drew a woman. And the baby appears to be standing in front, but as she explained, that is the baby in my belly. But this time, I was holding a birthday cake. So I was just like, okay, what's this, baby? I was like, is that you standing in front of mommy? Is that your birthday, my birthday? She said, no, mommy. That's you with the baby in your belly on your birthday. So I'm like, all right. Okay. So dated that one and I put it away. Fast forward. We're in December. Your girl not feeling well. Um, not feeling well. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. And I'm mean. Like, I'm just mean and cranky. Right? So, when I get like that, normally I get quiet because I don't want to give people attitude. And I'm really trying to decipher what is going on with me. So, fast forward. Where my birthday is approaching. And I would say December 20th, I snuck into the bathroom. My husband was sitting on the couch watching anime. Um, I snuck into the bathroom and I messaged my sister. And um, I said, I'm going to go ahead and take a test because, you know, my period is still like until three days um, out. But, you know, it's just crazy. And I'm like, is my body playing tricks on me? So, end up taking the pregnancy test, and y'all, I seen the dark line, and then I seen the faded line. So, I put it back in the box, um, I put the, uh, the pregnancy test back in the box, and I put it in the drawer. My husband is not the type to, to dig and search, and so I knew he wasn't going to go in there. So, what I did was... Um, Prior to that, prior to me taking that test December 20th, my mom, it was me, my mom, my aunt, and my husband, we all went out to eat because my mom took, took me out to eat for my birthday. And my husband mentioned something about kids. And then my aunt was like, you know, she had dreams. She'd been having dreams repeatedly about you know fishes and you know somebody being pregnant whatever whatever now anybody that knows my aunt once she dreams it you can take it to the bank and you can cash on it like that's it she just didn't know who it was right so um <laughs> and i was drinking a um uh, amaretta sour so my aunt took took my drink from me she was just like uh, no more drinking until you you sure that you not and I was like, all right cool. No pressure. Plus. I, I already have a little buzz So I was like, okay fast then then December 20th I took it seen the line and then the faded line right the faded line. So I was just like oh My god, all right, so fast forward um Y'all, I can't hold water. I, I I was just like, I don't know. So I end up telling my husband, um, I sent him to get it. And let he, I was like, well, you decipher for yourself, okay? You decipher for yourself. So when he looked and he was just like, well, you know what they say. Faded line is still a line. So he was like, you know, we're pregnant. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Like a mixture of emotions, you know. I, it's just a mixture of emotions just overtook me so I was just like okay but you know still taking it slow like still processing and we still wanted to make sure Christmas Day all right and I'm and I'm I'm not trying to be long but Christmas Day we go ahead and um what happened Christmas Day we was here we was chilling um and I my husband said he was hungry so I started to cook and then when I started to cook, I had got the, I think I got the meat done and everything. I just ain't had no rice or no mashed potatoes. Like, like the meat was done, the macaroni was done, but 
there was I couldn't even get a chance to make the rice because I started to have like this real sharp pain in my stomach that was Christmas Eve I started to have this real sharp pain in my stomach and it would not shake y'all I'm talking about I'm drinking ginger ale I'm trying to I'm trying to fart I'm trying to burp I'm trying I'm just trying and it was not shaking like and it was hurting so bad so Christmas Day Christmas early in the morning I could not take it no more. So I told my husband, hey, bring me to the hospital, man. Go to the hospital. Come to find out um, I had a UTI. And then, the, then they confirmed that I was early in pregnancy. So I was like, okay, well, honey. So then he was just like excited, whatnot. Fast forward. Um, that was the first time I went to the hospital. Um, December. 25th and that's when they confirmed that you know i was pregnant they gave me antibiotics for the uti but um i just detoxed um and because me once i find out i'm pregnant i'm not with taking anything i'm just i'm for the thug it out so of course my i did my intake on water and cranberry juice you know and just flushed it out that way fast forward january 1st family um new year's party um we're all having a blast end of the night get my mom home go use the restroom i wipe it was slightly pink so i said okay no pressure it's normal right you spot normal um a couple of days after that i i start flowing like i have a, a menstrual right so then I tell my husband, I want to go and make sure everything is okay. I get to the, um, I get to the hospital, get checked in. Um, they draw blood, they do an ultrasound, and they do a transvag, um, which is where they insert to do the ultrasound, right? Everything is good. They see the baby nicely tucked in, um, nicely planted, you know, so everything was looking good. So... They was just like, you know, just take it easy. Um, that was the 6th of uh, January. Fast forward, the 6th of January. So they, that, the, uh, Hospital A, now, this was my second time going to Hospital A because remember, I went on the 25th of um, December and then I returned on the 6th of January okay so hospital a said I was six weeks and three days according to my last menstrual okay so now um so then I'm like okay all right everything's looking good I go back on the 10th like four days later because me and my husband we had got into a disagreement right it was so stupid but i was petty so um we had got into a disagreement and he ran to the store and while he ran to the store i was on the phone with my sister and while i'm talking to her i just i just felt so weird mind you at this point it's heavy like i'm talking about heavy menstrual y'all so I'm sitting here talking to her and I just felt, not to sound so graphic, not to sound so disgusting, but I just felt like this, this, like I can't even explain it. Like I, it was, clearly it was a blood clot, but the size of it is what scared me. So now I'm, I'm in the, I, I went to go use the restroom. I went to go, yeah, I went to go use the restroom. So it fell in, it fell in the toilet. Um, but because of the amount of blood, I couldn't see to see how big it was or anything. So, of course, I'm like, okay, le left it alone. So, now I'm still I'm still on the phone with my sister. And at this point, I'm just like, yo, mind you, I'm already emotional, okay? I'm already crying. Um, you know, I'm just like, what the heck is going on? Then the second one, I felt it again. So, now I run to the bathroom and then I was able to catch it in the napkin. Took a video of it, took a picture of it. Y'all, this took place at the time, I would say within 30 minutes to an hour, about four clocks came out. So now my husband's calling me 
and because he pulled up on his friends so he was like you know you good and then he hears my voice and he's like why are you crying stop being emotional this and that so i'm snapping on him like i don't know what's going on with me this that and the third so i guess he thought that i was doing it for attention so then i'm telling him like come on i need to go to the hospital uh but at the time the phone died so i'm just like okay so y'all i just took in the shower another one came i would say two or three more came out while i was in the shower okay so then at this point i'm i get out the shower i get dressed i get comfortable because i have a whole routine when i'm i know i'm going to the hospital in case they decide to keep me so by the time i get downstairs he's pulling up and he's like where are you going and i'm like i need to go to the hospital so now at this point he's like oh snap like you know whatever so get to the hospital or whatever check the hcg the hcg went up right but from what the doc from what the doctor in the hospital a told me it didn't go up that much so i was just like okay so then when they ran the numbers they did the ultrasound they didn't do a transvag because i didn't want to do it at this point because i'm still leaking i'm still flowing and i do not i just you know i'm already paranoid with the amount of clots that that came out because at that point a total of eight came out before i can even get to the hospital and then when i got to the hospital two more came out and um so i'm just like freaking out y'all when i say i'm freaking out i'm like freaking out all right so fast so then um and i'm trying not to cry like i said because i'm still emotional okay so now the doctor come see me they got all the results back and what this man told me okay and i do want to use other choice of words that ain't holy i'm just being real okay this man told me that i am going through a miscarry let it run its course and go see my ob that's what that man told me all right but when he told me it didn't sit right with me like it just didn't sit right with me and i said call me crazy call me radical i don't care i was just like it didn't sit right with me because i also have fibroids all right so go home and you know i'm i'm bawling i'm heartbroken i'm just like all over the place and my husband is like, you know, he's like, what can he do? But I'm like, you know, of course I can't be selfish because he's going through it too. All right. So fast forward, um, I'm still menstrual, still flowing and, and, and for about 10 days. It was 10 days, like 10 days later, I go back to the hospital. No, I woke up Sunday morning and... I don't know why i was just like let me take a test take a test two hard lines so i'm like huh like i've been through a miscarriage before and just as quick as the numbers go up the numbers go down too they'll sit there and tell you oh it take a couple of tests before you know you don't uh until it, it gives you a negative result right so now i'm bothered at this point because once again i'm still flowing and uh, i did continue to take the prenatals or whatever so i'm just like okay so i told my husband i want to go to the hospital but i went to church first and then i end up leaving church <laughs> i end up leaving church early i went home changed do my little routine get my stuff ready to go to the hospital so now i go to hospital b i get to hospital b i tell the nurse practitioner what happened and she's looking at me like what so she was like okay so but and then i told her if we have to do a transvag ultrasound i'm okay with it because i need to know what's going on so she put the order in they draw the blood um when they draw the blood when they draw the blood um 
then um they sent me back out i sat back in the um waiting room for about 10 15 minutes and they called me to ultrasound when i got to ultrasound y'all this would piss me off i'm laying on there i'm laying the lady put the gel she's checking she's looking you know and then i hear the other lady she tells the she tells the lady doing my ultrasound what my hcg level was um from hospital a remember that man told me it went up a little bit and his little bit was like only a um my first one was 1900 um he said it was the low 2000s so i'm like okay all right so we monitoring that lady said my hdg level was 29 and change right so i'm like that ain't a little bit that ain't a little bit okay because technically the numbers are supposed to double so i'm like okay i said i ain't say nothing so the lady was like what happened i was like because that man told me a little bit or whatever so i was like go, girl go ahead and finish so she only did the pelvic ultrasound i said are you not going to do the transvag because the nurse practitioner told me that she was going to put order for both she said no she only put an order for the pelvic so now by the time i'm done with ultrasound they they had a bed ready for me so i go in there and then the resident came in it wasn't even the doctor yet it was the resident so when he came in um you know he's asking me questions and stuff like that then i show him the pictures of the blood clots that came out and stuff and he was just like um he said something i don't remember um so then a nurse came in trying to give me um try to give me pain meds and i'm like pain i don't i didn't i'm not in pain like no don't don't give me no meds i'm not i didn't ask for no meds so the resident misunderstood what i said when i was telling him i was still having symptoms because one of the symptoms that i was having was my breast was very like tender and sore like to the point like my husband couldn't even touch me like no so he thought i was saying i'm in pain but i wasn't so now the doctor comes in right who the resident is training under so i repeat the whole story to him and then he's like well your hcg levels at this point he's reading the notes because the hcg level didn't come in yet and the ultrasound didn't come in yet because it takes time but he's reading the notes from the doctor what the doctor left um, from hospital a and the doctor from hospital a said threatened abortion due to heavy bleeding and then so he was like where did you get miscarry from or something like i was like that once again my choice of word i was like that man told me i'm miscarrying let it run its course and for me to go see my ob that's what he told me okay and then so um so he was just like okay well um according to the we we i don't remember what they said about the sack i do not remember okay um but he said my hcg levels was over 5,000 at this point it was over 5,000. um they confirmed that it wasn't an ectopic pregnancy so so technically um i'm in my first trimester right that's what he explained to me so he said but i would need to come back in a week because he's showing that i'm like five weeks almost six weeks but hospital a said i'm um, six weeks and three days and you telling me i'm five weeks i was like all right whatever so now trying to get insurance trying to get medicaid um so you know um did the family's thing whatever um i did that so now i got to give them proof of pregnancy so then i book i i made an appointment to go to the women's health clinic so that they can do the pregnancy test and give me my proof of pregnancy all right y'all that appointment comes up go mind you i'm still taking pregnancy tests in between like every other day every two three days i'm taking a pregnancy test right um because i'm waiting for medicaid to kick in so that i can go to the ob um y'all all the tests kept coming back positive all right finally the appointment came for me to go to the women's health went um, and then the lady took, you know, they had to do their little thing. And then she took me to the bathroom. I did my test, come back, two hard lines, I'm pregnant. 
Then she asked me what's my last menstrual cycle. I told her November 20th. She said, according to that, you're, you're nine and a half weeks, almost 10. Hospital A says six weeks and three days. Hospital B says about five weeks. And then Women's Health is saying I'm supposed to be 10 weeks. So to be completely honest with y'all, at this point, I do not know how many weeks I am. I, I don't. I don't. And that's what the... Um, it's like an up and down and I took a test yesterday the 28th I took a test and it was two hard lines okay so I'm like I have an ultrasound scheduled um, and it's been frustrating because you I want to be excited I want to remain hopeful, but uh, but at the same time, it's like you don't want. I don't want to get my hopes too up there, and then I'm not. So it's like it's it's a tug of war, and then my husband not being here right now, and he's trying to you know, hurry up and get to me as quick as possible, you know, um, it's frustrating because I don't know what's going on. I don't want to keep going to the hospital because even the nurse at hospital B, she said, go to an OB because they're, they're trained for that. We're just going to do the basics and make sure you're okay. And I felt like she told me that like woman, a woman, you get what I'm saying? I wish I respect her for that and which is true because you know I'm just it's just gonna continue to send me in a loop now this is where I get messed up y'all I got to a point where I'm just like okay Lord I'm laying on the couch today and I say Lord I need you to help me uh, to trust you and to trust the process because I don't know how to feel um, I'm, I'm completely honest. My husband has more faith right now than I do because my thing is, I feel like I'm going to continue to continue in this tug of war until I see and know how many weeks I am and I, and, and they can show me something on the ultrasound or a heartbeat. So I feel like I'm in a tug of war. And then um, my husband, I know he won't be able to make it back for the appointment. So we are going to, um, he's going to be on FaceTime um, for that appointment. And I'm also nervous like, is it a miscarry or is it a heartbeat? Which one is it going to be? So um, it's definitely been very frustrating it's been very emotional it's been a roller coaster and i'm not okay i'm not okay um and i know i'm not going through it by myself like i said um hubby is not here at the moment but he's you know i i know baby i know you trying to hurry up and get back so that you know you can support me and we could be there for one another but Y'all, it is so draining. So, with that being said, I'm taking y'all along with me. Um, and I just continue to speak life into myself. I just, that's all I can do is speak life and speak the word of God. That's how I stay encouraged. So, um, if you look in the description box, the details you will see some of the verses um, that I've been reading that kind of keep me and of course being a preacher by nature I see where the enemy is attacking and the very thing hey glory God glory God glory God glory God glory to your name God the very thing that the enemy is attacking 
is the very thing that God is either exalting, getting ready to exalt, or is or is coming into fruition. And I've been feeling like let me change my battery. The very thing. So with that being said, I've been feeling like what I speak don't come to pass or it won't come to pass. I feel like I'm in a dead place where nothing will come forth. And one thing for sure, two things for certain. I may cry, I may fall into depression for a moment. But one thing, for sure, two things for certain. What Elder ain't chance he speak, it comes into fruition. I speak life. What I speak, it comes to pass. And there's no devil no demon, no demonic spirit can shift my mind otherwise. Because God has done too much. God has done too much. God has shown me too much. God has kept me and God has brought me through. Okay? I serve a God who honor his word above his name. His word does not come back void. So I know that I know that this is definitely taking me into a new place, a new realm, a new dimension in faith. And it's definitely building something. Okay? But what I do know, there's life in me. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally. There's life in me. So, with that being said, let's go to our appointment and let's see what's going on. <laughs> 